Okay, and we are recording. Hey, we're live. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the Middle School Council April meeting. Uh, we appreciate your time this evening. As you know, spring is a very busy time in the Bronxville School District, and we have a lot of things we want to update you on tonight. Um, but first, I would like to introduce Dr. Rachel Kelly, um, and she will give us an update for what's going on in the district. Dr. Kelly. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. It's so nice that it's so light and bright outside still. I was tempted to Zoom from outdoors, but decided against it. Um, nice to see so many of you this evening. I just wanted to take a few minutes um, to talk a little bit about next year's budget. Um, as you know, we have uh, the budget vote coming up on Tuesday, May 16th. Um, and that is also a board member election. Um, in terms of the budget, for those of you um, who may not have been following uh, the budget workshops, both the leadership team as well as the board's been working hard um, to figure out what, uh, what we need and how we can continue our academic excellence but also continue our, um, the focus on our students' social and emotional well-being. And we uh, were able to add a few positions um, that I think will really benefit the students and families in the district and allow us to continue to be proactive and not reactive when it comes to our children's social emotional well-being. So we will be adding a guidance counselor in addition to a school psychologist. Purpose of the guidance counselor is to allow a counselor to focus primarily on ninth grade and that transition into high school and the freshman transition program, as well as with our fifth graders. Uh, we have not had counseling program in our elementary school, and we thought that would be an important focus uh, to help our students um, become prepared for middle school. And in terms of the school psychologist, we're very excited to be able to hire someone who can um, help us with the evaluation requirements we have. And by doing that, that will allow our current psychologists to have more time to focus on their caseloads, on the teachers on those um, grade levels, as well as working with parents. Um, in addition, a third position um, is in next year's budget, and that is a K through eight math coach. Uh, some of you, most of you are probably familiar. Uh, we piloted a K-8 literacy coach. Um, we had not had coaches prior, and it's really worked out extraordinarily well. And we want to replicate that model for math. And that will help us um, make sure that we have good vertical alignment K through eight. And it will also make sure that we have an instructional coach on hand full time for professional development as it relates to math for our teachers. So we're very excited about these three um, new positions. We were able to pull this off by still staying under the tax gap. And that's primarily um, because there was a restructuring in central office. Um, where we may have had a move from an assistant superintendent to a superintendent, um, and we are not rehiring uh, an assistant superintendent. So that uh, did result in um, some nice cost savings uh, for the district. So um, just a reminder again, come out and vote. And um, I look forward to taking any questions that you have. I can take them now. You can put them in the chat, whatever works for you. Okay, Dr. Kelly, I guess we can monitor the chat for a little bit. And if anybody posts anything, we'll come back to that. Sounds good. Thank you. So, um, Mr. Joe Mercora, would you like to give us an update on what's happening in the building? Yes, thank you so much, Deidre. And thank you, everybody, for accommodating me for the schedule change on this meeting. I, I really appreciate that. We um, One of the things I'm going to talk about is why we did have to Change the schedule here. We um, we have a we just have some great things going on. Very excited as we uh, get close to the month of May. It's hard to believe this year is going by pretty quickly. And I guess time is flying. And I guess we're having a lot of fun because it's going real fast. Um, again, always uh, we always go back to the promise: lead, engage, innovate, and think critically. This is this is our north star. It's our 
guiding uh, force here in Bronxville. And uh, it's something we always remind students of each and every time. And especially when we have those assemblies with them as well, we try to go over it. So we stick to it. Um, some April highlights that I'm very thrilled to share with you was we were able to give the eighth graders uh, a trip option that allowed us to take them to Boston. And uh, during that time, uh, it was last Monday, Tuesday, and we came back on Wednesday. And uh, the students were able to engage in some really historic visits and have a lot of fun at the same time. So we uh, took the students on the Freedom Trail. We took them to the Museum of Science. We took them to Quincy Market. We had a Boston Ghost and Gravestones tour, which is a lot of fun. Uh, we actually were able to visit Lexington and Concord on the day before the historic battle of Lexington and Concord. So that was something very special to share and made their history come alive to them. Uh, we took them to an amazing aquarium. Uh, it was really fun uh, to take a historic boat tour with the students during the day. We're an actual historian. Uh, just spoke to them about the Boston Harbor, not just from a historical perspective, but from an engineering perspective, uh, from an architectural perspective, and uh, just gave some really great insightful information that uh, really was wonderful for the kids to hear and learn a little bit more about. We were able to um, take the students on the Boston Harbor dinner cruise. Uh, on both cruise events, we were the only school, only people on the boat. So the kids really did have a great time just to that as a class and as a unit. We finished up our uh, visit uh, on our way home. We stopped off in Mystic, Connecticut, where the students were able to see the seaport and the museum. And, and just a quick word about our eighth graders. And here they are, uh, <laughs> the ones that went on the trip. This was on the way back in Mystic, Connecticut. You know, this group has had a really, why this trip and then why offering them another trip? Just so you know, they've, they've had a real interesting journey in middle school. Uh, their fifth grade year ended with the pandemic shutdown. Their sixth grade year was not an atypical sixth grade year where most sixth graders get to enjoy the freedom of movement around the school. They've basically had an elementary experience where they stayed in one classroom all day and the teachers made their way in and out to them. So it, it really was that unique middle school experience. Uh, you were all here for seventh grade last year. We began the year in masks during the time when they would have went on their traditional Williamsburg trip. A lot of things were shut down. I know I lived that even myself in the elementary school. So they really had never gone on any of the uh, trips in the middle school world. So we were able to um, get them on this trip, Boston, which uh, we were able to revive after years and years of not going. Uh, and I we had a great time and uh, please indulge me in showing you some of the pictures, some of the many, many pictures uh, that we took on that day, on those days. Uh, right in the middle over there is Mr. Agnello, who again was key in organizing the trip. So we thank him for that. And uh, the kids had a great time. I know I had a great time and uh, nice thing for a, a principal to hear is when you're checking out of a hotel. And uh, after three days, two nights of being with a bunch of eighth graders in a hotel, for the manager to make their way out to see you and say that in the 25 years of having students come in and out of hotels, this was by far the best experience we've I've ever had as a manager. And I wish that you guys could go give lectures to other schools about how students are supposed to act and behave and represent their school district when they're in other places. So that was a real great shot in the arm to hear as we were leaving and, and a hike. And I'm going to share all that with the students when we meet in an assembly setting again. So um, they really represented our district well. They had a great time and had some nice memories also, hopefully, that they'll remember for a long time. Um, we just had a great month in so many ways. Uh, you know, National History Day has historically been a high school uh, competition, but there is a middle school component to it. And this year we had students who were interested and we had uh, Sebastian, Elizabeth, Emerson, and Amelia uh, who each competed and, and advanced at the regional competition, which was held on March 25th. And they all went on to the state level at, on April 24th at SUNY Anianta, Anianta. And Emerson and Amelia will now compete at the national level. And this is a picture of the two of them receiving. They were a little teary-eyed in there, but uh, we're so very proud of them. And, and a big shout out and thanks to Ms. Rydell, uh, the history teacher uh, who worked with the students on this. This was a voluntary thing that students uh, uh, were, if we're interested, we 
made the time and made sure that they could be a part of it. And look at that. They were calling all the, they went against teams of uh, 30 and 40 and uh, they've advanced so far. And we're very proud of all of our students, but hearing a little more about these students in the weekly newsletter, but I, I thought it would be very appropriate to celebrate them a little bit at this meeting as well. Um, I have shameless promotion for my friends who are running the international fair. It's this Friday, April 28th from five to eight. And I just want to remind everybody that it was our own little Zoe Reed. Uh, congratulations to her winning the international fair logo contest. And we're looking forward to seeing that in display on display at the celebration. And I can tell you that thank you on behalf of all of the middle school for allowing one of our students to design that. It's created a lot of interest in the event at the middle school level. And we're looking forward to being there. Um, just to give you an update, uh, we've started this and we'll continue these grade level meetings with students. And uh, this question posed to the students as we start wrapping up the year is what will your legacy, what will you be your let what will be your legacy at Broxville? And you know, we we do this as a way to start the reflection process as you end the year, and we definitely go a little deeper with this with our eighth graders, but we consider ways to make sure that they leave a legacy that they could always be proud of. And what are ways that you can do that? And then we asked a little deeper question, what will your legacy look like? And the idea was to follow up with some questions, get some great questions from the kids and come up with ideas with a, with a plan to help students understand what can be one's legacy. And we talked about all the great characteristics that they exhibit, resilience, perseverance, kindness. Um, and this year, as you know, as part of our strategic planning continuing, uh, we were looking at ways to better transition students uh, and to really develop that core quality of leadership in students. And peer-on-peer -peer assistance is something that, you know, as you all know, we're very fond of here at the middle school. It's something I truly believe in. So started this idea and concept of a student ambassadors program, and we're going to be piloting it actually a lot earlier at the end of this year. And uh, I asked for students that would be interested in helping, as the word is, uh, students from fifth grade into sixth grade. And I said that we'd be meeting, um, you know, to, right after state testing came to a halt and uh, start doing some training and do some activities as we get into late May and June. And I didn't think I would get much of a student interest and I opened it up just to seventh and eighth graders right now. Uh, and I had 41 students uh, as of this morning reach out and answer that call. So we're going to be working on that together and uh, we're looking forward to uh, sharing this with you at our May meeting. Uh, I'm gonna have some of the ambassadors come and present as well as some of our students that I'm mentioning in these uh, other slides. Um, so this is gonna be a boring Mr. McCora presentation, but you're gonna see a lot of students in May uh, and I'm looking forward to them sharing their experiences with you. Uh, our sixth graders recently went on a trip to Sharp Reservation. And this is traditionally a trip that we run at the beginning of the school year for sixth graders. It just wasn't available, but it's a, it's really a, a trip that's meant to help students with decision-making, class team bonding, solving problems, critical thinking, et cetera. And it was a great experience for the kids. And we really uh, feel they came back a little more bonded as a class. And it's something that we're definitely planning for early uh, in the year next year for our sixth graders. Uh, state testing, um, see the big check mark there. We successfully administered the tests on Monday and Tuesday. Kids did a wonderful job. As I mentioned this morning briefly at Executive Council, we try to tell the kids in, you know, that they are just build their confidence, that they're so prepared, that this is another uh, test and you take harder tests in your class and uh, just building on their confidence level. I cannot express in words how proud we were of them and the way they state testing. They just did it like pros and uh, students finished. There was no stress, meltdowns, anything like that. It was just a, a well done execution of the test and very proud of them. And we have our math test coming up on uh, May 2nd and May 3rd. So we're looking forward to that as well. Uh, shameless promotion again. We are back with the middle school musical this year. And this year it's the Lion King. And it will be held on Friday and Saturday and 6th at 7 o'clock p.m. And a big thank you, Simpson. Thank you to all the parents who also who have supported Ms. Simpson uh, as she went through this year. Her, her staff that she's put together and our incredible students. I um, Shameless promotion here. Ms. Simpson shared this with me of our students working over the weekend and after school uh, on the sets. And these are behind the scenes uh, people that uh, don't often get celebrated, but we're going to make sure we celebrate them at the end of each show as well. And hard at work and really having a lot of fun doing it. It's, it's actually really 
fun to stay after and be here late on nights because you get to hear them practicing and they're very excited about it. And we're looking forward to it as well. And the theme of course is Hakuna Matata and uh, we'll continue that theme with them as uh, they go forward. Looking forward to celebrating them as well. So May is coming. There's a lot to do with May and, and uh, what I'm hoping getting out and communicating to parents very quickly in the next two weeks is a, is a lot of things. And one of them obviously is our end of year schedule. So parents can plan appropriately themselves for themselves for the end of the school year. Um, our concert dates, obviously, we look forward to celebrating our students' talent. Any end of year activities and trips that are being planned, and uh, I'll be working with the PTA on some of those events. I know sixth grade team wants a sixth grade group wants to have an end of year celebration. I know with our sixth graders, looking forward to that. We can make it a theme of celebrating their first year of middle school completing completion. Uh, we also are looking forward to um, giving you a strategic planning update so that you can see where the work has evolved since we began. Uh, we, I, and I want to thank parents that have already reached out to me, but we're looking for some parental assistance on May 31st at 7 o'clock p.m. We're going to have a fifth grade parent orientation in person uh, in our auditorium. Our student ambassadors will be featured at that event. They're going to be offering tours uh, of the middle school to um, fifth grade families if they would like one. Uh, we're also going to have some student reflections and presentations at that fifth grade parent orientation. If there are any parents that would like to also uh, be involved in that, uh, please reach out to me and thank you so much to all that were. We'd like to definitely have some hospitality available to the parents coming in, some welcoming faces and some parents that uh, fifth grade parents can turn to, especially if it's their first child because middle school is always uh, you know, an interesting transition, but we're looking forward to making it a really smooth and fluid one for our fifth graders. Um, we're going to bring some eighth graders uh, again to our May meeting and give you some reflections and presentations by them um, on their experience. I always think that's great for PTAs to hear and parents to hear because it's through the parent and the homes and the school and the PTA and the foundation and all the many factors that go into making Bronxville such a special place. And I want to have students come and express their experience. And so you can hear a little bit from them. I think I can speak about it, but it's better when you hear it from the students themselves. And uh, again, thanks for everything you do to support us each and every day. We've had a pretty eventful April, but it's going to be a jam-packed May. Uh, I didn't mention even Memorial Day because that's always a fun celebration here at Bronxville. And I know I enjoyed last year's and from what I'm hearing this year's is even going to be uh, bigger and bigger than that one. And that was great. So um, thank you so much for the support. I'm happy to anybody has and if anybody has anything they'd like to ever reach out me personally and I'd be happy to speak to you so thank you thanks Deidre thank you so much good stuff coming out of the middle school it's very exciting to hear thank you Joe um next up we have Katrina Ney with an update from the school foundation Katrina yes. Yeah, thanks, Deidre. Hi, everyone. Um, that was a lot of fun and exciting news, so a tough act to follow, but I will try my best. Um, as you know, the Foundation's grants program supports every aspect of life at our school, including cutting-edge programs and resources and faculty growth and development. The Foundation is in the process of reviewing an array of really wonderful grant applications in the arts, athletics, STEM, and health and wellness for the benefit of our students. The board will vote on these proposals in early May, and then all grants approved by the Foundation Board are subject to approval by the Board of Education. Your donations make this grants program possible. So thank you to the many school families that have already made a gift to the foundation this year. Uh, the foundation's community drive continues through the spring. So please consider making a donation if you have not already. Our goal is to achieve 100% participation from school families. In addition, if you or someone in your household is a Bronxville School alum, you should have received the Foundation's alumni newsletter last month. It includes a great recap of the centennial events and all the reunions that took place in the fall. If you did not receive the mailing, please reach out to the Foundation to update your alums' contact information so we can stay in touch. As always, please visit the Foundation's website at bronxvilleschoolfoundation.org to learn more about the Foundation's latest work to support our children. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. Um, okay, now we have a lot to discuss um, in terms of our committees. There's some updates um, and things that uh, they have asked me to share. Um, the first thing I'd like to tell you is that um, 
We are very grateful for you, you folks who have attended our Partners in Prevention uh, program last month. Um, for those of you that could not attend, um, Dr. Mudan has given us her presentation and we have posted it on the Be Well page on the PTA website. Um, if you have trouble navigating, please reach out to me and I will send you the direct link. Um, next up, we have Faculty Appreciation Luncheon. This is gonna be on May 5th. It is a wonderful event and a chance to say thank you to our teachers and staff. You can sponsor a teacher or staff member for just $15 in lieu of cooking or baking something. Um, so check your inbox for an email that went out today with the links um, to purchase and sponsor, or you can go directly to membership toolkit and find um, the option there. Also, middle school yearbooks. The last day to order is May 20th. You can also purchase this directly on the, on the toolkit. The students love signing yearbooks and checking out the pictures and Ms. Oliveri and her team do a great job every year um, and they're very excited to share this with you guys. So if you haven't purchased already, um, get on the membership toolkit and check out the yearbook. Um, also, Memorial Day weekend. It's a huge fundraiser for our school and no one does Memorial Day quite like our PTA volunteers. There are a lot of activities planned. The tickets for the socials and the other events will open this Friday at 9 a.m. And volunteer times for all the events um, will, be, will be there as well. They are also looking for any middle school parents or students to help out with the event. Um, also, there will be a huge online auction with items tailored for the middle school, the elementary school, and the high school. The preview of these items will be go live at the school socials, so a lot to look forward to in May. Um, and now I'd like to turn it over to our eighth grade chair, Michelle Antonini, who's going to give us the update on the grade. Michelle? Okay, um, let me move to seventh grade and Jen Heathwood. Hi everybody, thanks Deirdre. Um, I just have a couple quick announcements from your seventh grade team. Um, but first, let me say that I believe the, the middle school council meeting, does everyone hear my phone ringing? I'm so sorry for that. Perfect timing. Oh my God, did I go away? You're here. Oh no, because my phone rang and it went, sorry. So anyway, I was gonna say the middle school um, Memorial Day social is Friday, May 19th. I know that they were talking about it, but I just thought I'd make sure you guys all know that that's the date. Um, and from seventh grade, the um, I just wanna let you know that if this is your first time having a seventh grader, that this is the first year that our kids will be taking final exams. So just wanted to make sure that you guys have that on your radar. And I know Mr. Mercora talked about how he's going to be sending out schedules. So just a heads up that that's coming. And then um, the seventh grade team, we are looking at planning something fun. Their teen center is hopefully planning something great. I know they already are, but we're also hoping to add to it or do something a little different. So we are working on that just to make year end kind of special for our guys. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Um, I got a note also from the sixth grade team um, for all sixth graders put June 5th on the calendar. That's going to be the challenger trip. And you're going to hear more about it. They're going to split the grade. Um, some will go in the morning and some will go in the afternoon, but it's so great to have this trip back. Um, we're very excited to hear about it. Um, and the eighth grade would like me to share a huge thank you to, uh, to Joe and to Jim Agnello for an incredible trip to Boston and to be on the lookout for, um, for information on the Williamsburg trip. And they will be following up with to all the eighth grade parents with information about graduation, the graduation party after the ceremony, and all those fun things to look forward to in June. So that will be coming out next week. Um, okay, and now I'd like to turn to the Arts Council and Jenny, there's a lot happening here too. 
Yes, I'll try to make it quick. Um, fortunately, Joe already mentioned a lot of it. So thank you, Joe. Uh, next Friday and Saturday, we have Lion King Jr., which is the middle school musical. So please come out and support our cast and crew. They've been working hard. Um, I think they're having a lot of fun and I think it'll be a great event. Um, we have, uh, let's see, middle school chorus concert is May 25th. The middle school orchestra concert is June 6th and the middle school band concert is June 7th and they're all at 7 p.m. So please um, also come and support uh, our musicians in the middle school. And we're very excited about the Arts Festival this year. It's our second annual and um, it's three days beginning Tuesday, May 16th, running through Thursday. Um, Tuesday is sort of the biggest day, weather permitting. Each day at dismissal, there will be a musical ensemble. Uh, from 2.45 until 3.15. On Tuesday, it's a high school ensemble. On Wednesday, it's middle school. And on Thursday, it's elementary. So all schools will be represented musically. Um, we have the art show inside. Please don't forget to go inside and see the art. Um, we have a lot happening outside, but the art is kept inside uh, due to weather. But please make sure you come inside and see. We have K through 12. So all grades represented um, and beautiful, beautiful artwork. So please make sure you go inside and check Check that out. We will. That's from five to seven on Tuesday, and um, we're going to have an interactive student art installation on the lawn, which is very cool. The kids get to help create it, and it's a really neat structure. I don't want to give too much away because it's a surprise, but I think you'll really enjoy it. The kids will have a lot of fun. Um, we have Bronxville Arts merchandise for sale. And we're going to have food trucks. This year we're having more than one. So hopefully the line won't be quite as long. Um, and then we also have an open mic night hosted by the Bronxville High School Arts Society that will be Tuesday, 6.30 to 8. Um, we will have Wednesday, like I mentioned, we'll have the middle school chamber group uh, doing music at pickup time. We'll also have merchandise for sale. And then we have the high school orchestra concert at 7 p.m. that night. So please feel free to check that out. And then Thursday, we'll have the elementary school chamber music at pickup time, 2.45 to 3.15. Um, the interactive art installation will still be out. Merchandise will still be for sale. And at 7 p.m., we have the chorus concert at night. So there's a lot of art and music going on. Please come support um, K through 12. Please come support it all. It's all good stuff. So please come really is all good stuff. Thank you, Jenny. Um, speaking of more good stuff, Sarah Kenny, athletics, a lot happening here. Hi, everyone. Um, one, I would love to say thank you for the Boston trip to Mr. Morcora. Um, I know my eighth grade son and all his friends had the best time and lots of fun memories. So thank you. Um, I'm going to follow Jenny with there's a lot going on this spring with sports as it's really fun to see driving by the fields that all our kids are out there from seventh grade up until our seniors and games are constantly going. We've scheduled the week of May 8th as our senior week and our spirit our school spirit week. They're going to be um, I think a lot of parents will be happy there will be food trucks four nights during the week so you don't have to cook. Monday, the girls varsity game will be going on. This will be senior night. We'll have Max food truck. On Tuesday, the baseball game will be going on. Come down to Scout Field. We're having a tricky time with insurance reasons for Westchester getting a food truck. So we're definitely gonna have pizza, but we're trying to figure out how to work in a hot dog truck. Wednesday, the tennis team and track and field will be home. We're gonna have Anthony's food truck. Thursday's off. And Friday, we have the boys varsity lacrosse game. And Chef Rob's food truck will be there as long as well as Jimmy's ice cream truck. So I know some of the eighth graders are going to be in Williamsburg, which um, which is, you know, it is what it is. But for the sixth and seventh graders who aren't there, we would love for you all to come down to the fields. And I know this is the last week of Modified as well. I think it's the last week of games. So I'm sure everybody will be down and we're hoping for really good weather. Um, I just want to make an announcement about fall tryouts, um, just because there's always been a lot of questions about this. Um, there for soccer, there's going to be an ID camp in June um, at the end of the month while school is still in session. At this point, kids will be invited to tryouts, which will begin, um, I believe, August 21st. So you will get some indication if your child is going to play a lot of middle school kids do end up playing JV soccer. Um, if this is the case, at the end of June, you'll receive information from the athletic department about the APP test and um, the maturity test. Um, for football, there's going to be a meeting uh, for JV football 
in mid-May. Uh, so look out for that soon. We're deciding on a date shortly. And JV football will begin the week of August 21st for all of you who want to mark your calendars for summer vacations. You need to know that it's pretty much mandatory that boys are back by the 21st if they're playing football. Um, and so that is all, all we have for now. So, but thank you. And I hope everyone comes out the week of May 8th. Thank you, Sarah. Um, also some good stuff happening with the DEI committee. Uh, Teresa Brady, are you on? There she is. Thanks, Deirdre. Thanks, Mr. McCora, for the plug for the International Weekend events coming up. If you um, need tickets, they're for sale on the Membership Toolkit. Friday night, we have over 36 countries represented by parents and kids of the school. It will be educational, fun, and delicious. And Saturday, we are hoping the weather holds out for our first Holy Color Run. Holy is um, a festival celebrated by Hindus celebrating the start of spring. It was celebrated in March, but we are doing it in the warm weather on Saturday morning at 8.30 in the morning. Wear white, wear something that you plan to throw away. Um, and as people run the mile, um, students and teachers will be throwing safe, non-toxic color powder, and we hope it will be beautiful. And all the proceeds will go to the High School International Service Club and um, towards their ongoing work with Bridges to Community, which is um, in the Dominican Republic. Thank you so much, Teresa. Um, so thank you for everybody that participated tonight. Um, there are a lot of important dates that are on the email um, that talked about our, um, that had our agenda for the evening. Look, put them in your calendar, um, and we will be following up um, with emails, with social media posts, and with our weekly brochure with all of the details on all the events coming up. Um, our next council meeting is going to be on Wednesday, May 17th. And if you need anything from any one of us in the PTA or in the school, please reach out. We're always here for you. And thank you for uh, joining us tonight. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Thanks, Deirdre. Joe. Take care. Bye.